Hey everyone, so I've got a real sweet spot for frail, underrated support mons. In Series 6, I ran Heliolisk with Weakness Policy Ludicolo. Now in Series 7, I've been giving Mian Xiao a lot of playing time. Today, I'm going to be showcasing my competitive doubles team that I've been using for the majority of December of 2020. The team isn't built around Mian Xiao per se, but he has become the unsung hero and backbone of the team. If you would like to use this team, I will be leaving the rental code at the end of the video, and I'll drop the pokey paste in the description. I'm brand new to making YouTube content with real love and care, so hitting the like and subscribe buttons would make my day. Most importantly, leave a comment. Whether it be on how you run Mian Xiao in VGC, or how you think you could tweak this specific team for the better, I would love to see what you all have to say. But just like in VGC, Toxic isn't a thing. So let's be nice. Anyways, let's take a look at the team. There's two fun mix-ups to the team that can hopefully justify me using this oversaturated team composition. We have a bulky Lilligant, which is the spread that Picoletics recommends, so I was sh like, sure, why not? It's not like Lilligant is trying to sweep anyways. And as for its moves, it's very generic. After you, Powder, Protect, and I put Energy Ball instead of Leaf Storm for more consistent damage, since Energy Ball is still going to knock out Water Ground types like Swampert and Gastron, really the only mons I need Lilligan to one-shot. Plus, spamming Eruption like it's expanding force is oh so satisfying. After her, we have a very standard Sunroom core of Glacier, Torkoal, Dusclops, and Thunderous. Normally, the horse runs weakness policy, but I just didn't find myself being able to get off a Rock Tomb or a Brick Break enough for self-proc. Plus, running Orb allows me to throw out Haze a little easier in the event I face a self-proc like Colossal or Metagross. Since Thundee can't have Orb, I just threw Lumberry on him, since I found him very susceptible to status. I mean, setting Electric Terrain doesn't even save it from Spores, so... While his damage output is slightly reduced, he's done enough in my opinion. And then we come to the mon you've all been waiting for, Mian Xiao. This Whisker Boy is potentially the most underrated counterpick in all of EGC. He has the perfect balance of damage output and utility moves. He has Inner Focus, one of the best abilities for support Pokemon, especially with Incineroar crawling everywhere. 105 is a solid speed tier, especially when getting an Airstream boost from his teammate that's in an even better speed tier. He works in multiple modes. You can go Hyper Offense with Thundee and predict the Intimidate lead. You can cover Dusclops as he sets Trick Room, and he can also work as a late game revenge killer. Anyways, enough bragging about him, and let me show you for myself. So our first match is against Yusuke from Persona 5, and the Phantom Thieves aren't here to give me a calling card. They're here to give me an L on the ladder. Anyways, first thing I notice is Double Intimidate, which I'm sure he wants to bring seeing Glacier. This ties into the beauty of Mian Xiao. Intimidate leads is one of the many very popular meta staples that Mian Xiao can handle very well. You'll see the other ones I'm talking about later on in the video, but with leading Thunderous Mian Xiao, this makes Incineroar only a liability for my opponent. Inner Focus got a buff in Gen A to make it immune to both flinching and intimidate now. On top of that, Thunderous Defiant is going to punish him extra hard, so sure, go ahead. Bring Intimidate for Glacier. I insist. Incineroar sure has a lot of options, but you can sleep well knowing he's always packing Fake Out and Intimidate. Sure enough, my team preview skills come in handy and I predicted the Ensign lead. You're about to see, Intimidate does no attack stat dropping to my side of the field, only buffing. Predicting this Incineroar lead is so important because I haven't even touched a button yet and I'm theoretically in the lead. Like, my opponent is definitely thinking the exact opposite right now, for sure. Like, oh no, I have to play defensively now. Yeah, I definitely think an important lesson that I've learned so far playing VGC is to play VGC in two different phases. It's winning team preview, and then you win the battle. Because in doubles, like, there's so many scenarios in which you could just lose right away on turn one, which, in my opinion, this game is looking to be like that. But yeah, you could just lose on turn one so easily, so... Getting that team preview win is just so important. Anyways, with this immediate momentum in my favor, I just decided to step on the gas and go right into hitting my opponent hard. We Dynamax our own Thunderous, and thankfully we win the speed tie against my opponent's Thunderous and uh, hit him for quite a lot of damage. I didn't really think about this in the moment, but like he could have just Dynamaxed himself and hit me really hard, or he could have used Fly, which he does, and I don't know, I didn't really think about that, but I mean, we take this, so... His Thunderous is going to use Fly, and uh, thankfully we're not going to be hitting him anymore because we already hit him. And Incineroar goes for the Will-O-Wisp. They don't usually run that, which is pretty interesting, but uh, I was prepared for it, so 
no harm done. So my thought process here is, since both of my Pokemon outspeed both of his, and Incineroar gets knocked out by either one, I figured me and Chao being the slower one between him and Thunderous is totally useless this turn. So I decided to preserve him for later, since his Focus Sash is still intact, and hard switch into the oh-so-tanky Dusclops. This is actually pretty beneficial for a few reasons, since I can threaten with a mid-game Trick Room for Glacier, and I can also eat up the incoming Fly from Thunderous much more comfortably. So uh, quickly getting back to the whole will o -Wisp situation, I guess this lead you want to actually burn Mian Xiao, but like at face value, a plus one Thunderous is far more dangerous, especially since you know he's going to Dynamax, so I take advantage of the whole fact Mian Xiao is the unsung hero of this team, and he's just too good at flying under the radar. Anyways, while I was on my whole spiel, Celesteela enters the fray for the first time, and goes for a turn one protect, because honestly, I don't blame Yusuke. He's in a pretty bad situation, and Celesteela takes a plus two max lightning to the face, do a protect, and still loses half its HP. I mean, sometimes, Dynamax is just that busted. Meanwhile, Yusuke's Thunderous sees how much damage my Thunderous is doing and gets a little bit of jealous, so he goes all out attack and lands a big old crit. While the crit was unfortunate, Taking the wild charge hit was actually a blessing in disguise. Initially, I was prepared to two hit Thundy with two nightshades, but all the recoil he took put him in range of just one. And so Dusclaws picks up a KO turn one. Our phantom thief friend Fox is on his back two legs, and he follows up the thunderous defeat with Togekiss. And now that I'm thinking about it, he has four flying types on his team. That's interesting. Togekiss goes for the Protect as a plea to spare his life because at this point I'm afraid there's nowhere to run. It's also okay that Kiss protects here because I was going to target Celesteela anyways since it protected last turn just to be certain. Bringing three Flying types and Incineroar to the battle is just a recipe for disaster for Thunderous. Didn't even have to think about Glacier this battle. Nightshade into Kiss for chip damage, but protects, and this causes Yusuke to admit defeat in our first win of the day. All according to plan. Well, on to the next triumph. Our second battle, I'm really excited to show you all. We get to battle the Reggie Gigas Weezing duo. You're probably asking two questions right now. One, how do you know they'll lead Gigas Weezing? And two, why are you excited to battle them? Well, one, Gigas teams are often predictable and standard. They always lead them. And two, you're about to see why. While I'm excited to battle this team because Horse and Thunder destroyed five of these six Pokemon, I am worried about Rotom Heat. Aside from superpower and close combats, this team actually gets walled by Rotom really hard, and hey, sometimes you gotta live with that. Sure enough, we get the right call again, and without a sliver of doubt, I'm ready to go for my homemade Regigigas 1-2 combo. This includes Dynamaxing Thunderous, big surprise, and also not faking out or taunting Weezing since they always go for Protect Turn 1. This makes decision making a lot easier for me since he could also taunt and Will-O-Wisp, but those aren't very practical on Turn 1. I also was going to anticipate a Max Hailstorm into Thunderous, because that's the only move he can hit Thunderous with without dropping his stat of mine, but I forgot. Defiant is nullified thanks to Weezing's neutralizing gas, so I guess he could Max Strike me with no repercussions. He's also going to Dynamax his Regigigas, as expected, for you know, maximum uh, damage output. And it's at this point that I realize that my plan is definitely coming into fruition. If Regigigas Dynamaxes, it's pretty clear that they're not trying to protect turn one, they just want to be doing as much damage as possible. Since Weezing's always protect turn one, I pay it no mind for now and focus on that big golem that looks like he's got foot fungus or something. Since both my mons outspeed his, we max knuckle into him first, and yeah, that's pretty good chip damage. Raise your attack for next turn, but how could Welcome Punch Yeah. Mian Chao says thanks for the attack boost and does about 75-80% to 80 to max Regigigas. I've done the calculations, and even the lowest rolls from both of my Pokemon combined just barely takes out zero bulk Gigas. And for not seeing my true combo, he pays the price and loses a stock. These reinforcements keep getting better and better for me this video. I mean, Lapras? What is, what is Lapras gonna do? So, uh... Lapras doesn't even bother to protect, just eats up a 100% uh, of its health from a Max Lightning, and we get the KO and set up the Electric Terrain. And at this point, like, even though we have plus one Mian Xiao attacking into Weezing, I wasn't really sure how much damage I was going to do, and I figured it'd just be better if I taunted, because who knows, maybe he tries to burn Mian Xiao, seeing how much damage I did to Regigigas, so 
We just show him that we know the Will-O-Wisp is coming. I don't know who he was going for. If he was going for Thunderous, then it just, you know, all for naught. But if he was going to Mianchao, that actually did save me a little bit. He actually switches and Rotom Heat, which I was scared of this whole time, but I think he realizes that I've done too much damage and yeah, the game is just over. So good game and on to the next battle. Okay, so the first two battles were all Mianchao Thunderous, but you're probably wondering why you haven't seen Lilico yet. And the answer is, she's not good at all. There's literally no reason to not run Venusaur, but I just want to have some fun, because I see Venusaur everywhere. I will say though, if I do use this team in a tournament, I'll definitely sub in Venusaur for Lilligan for more efficient damage, G-Max Vinelash, and a better answer to Tapu Fini and Clefairy. Anyways, y'all probably want to see them, and I have no idea what to make of this team, but I don't see any redirection, fake out, or fire immunities, so we go for it. All I saw in team preview was hyper offense, which means we're less likely to get hit with any kind of move that would prevent sleep powder or after you from getting off since even though she's super fast in sun, a plus one priority move is still outspeeds. So our opponent seems to lead with Needle King and Salamence. So both are very powerful Pokemon, but neither are faster than Chlorophyll Lilligant and therefore Torkoal. I also led this team because there really seems to be a lack of support moves on this team, so I don't have to worry about Tailwind or Taunt. Um, yeah, so just Hyper Offense. This lead for my opponent could have definitely been a little bit worse. Like, if he had led Salamence and Swampert, I definitely would be in a tough situation. But we can take care of Nido King, that's fine. Another scary thing about Salamence is, honestly, even though it's running Intimidate, there's very much the possibility that it could be a physical attacker and just, you know... Intimidate and physical, even though usually you run Moxie with a physical uh, Salamence. So I really have no idea if this is a special attacker or a physical attacker. So I mean, we'll only find out depending on how much damage he does. Lilligan wants to show her gratitude to her bestie Torkoal and lets him go before everyone else. How sweet of her. Torkoal lets loose with a maximum power eruption that does an impressive chunk to the enemy since Nido King is likely max speed. He didn't have a chance. Salamence follows up with a max airstream and actually one-shots Torkoal. So sad to see Torkoal go. Time to pay our respects. Yeah, I just had to take a moment to respect our fallen soldier. At least he didn't die in vain because we know that Salamence is a special attacker now because he would have definitely tanked a physical max airstream. So, uh, what are you doing after, huh? I'm kind of seeing someone. Right, cool. Yeah. Hogward. Yeah. This guy took a while to pick his next Pokemon, so Salamence and Lilligan were kind of just sitting there awkwardly. Uh, he brings in Swampert now, and this is a fantastic matchup for Lilligan. And Lilligan's boyfriend, Glacier, didn't like the way Salamence was talking to her, so he comes in for a piece of the action. So we're definitely going to Dynamax Glacier here. And I had to decide whether he would protect with Salamence or Swampert, and which one would attack Lilligan, since after you shenanigans are kind of my win condition and very threatening in general. And both of his Pokemon can take out Lilligan in one shot with a Max Airstream or an Ice Punch, so gotta keep her safe. Swampert opts for the Protect, and I'm glad he did, because I went for the Dragon anyways. Lilligan says, go beat him up, and uh, Glacier complies. The horse goes for the Max Hailstorm and freezes him into a fossil Pokemon. Another reason I targeted Salamence this turn is because honestly I have really no clue what else this uh, special attacking Salamence could be running. It could be running a Max Flare, and that could do a lot of damage to a Glacier or Max Dragon, lower my attack, so honestly I just figured whether he goes into Lilligant or Glacier he's going to be doing a lot of damage that I don't want to deal with. So now Glacier gets his Moxie boost. Well, it's Chilling Nay, but it's the same thing as Moxie. And uh, Lilligan takes some hail damage. That reminds me, the sun is gone. So now it's practically as if uh, Lilligan was paralyzed. Like her speed is cut in half, which kind of stinks. Anyways, we see an endgame Urshifu. I think all VGC players can agree with me with how terrifying an endgame Urshifu is. We get the Poison Jab and we somehow live a Choice Banded Poison Jab. I did not expect that. I didn't expect Lilligan to live anything with Choice Band. Anyways, we uh, live to see an Energy Ball in the Swampert, and uh, we take the free kill, you know, totally take those, and uh, Glacier should finish off 
choice band Urshfu with, you know, one max Hailstorm. And it turns out that it's Focus Sash. So, uh, Poison Jab on a Focus Sash Urshifu. Does that mean it doesn't have Sucker Punch or Detect? It's kind of tough. Anyways, the uh, Hail makes the Focus Sash pointless, and uh, I'm just kind of confused about that end game. Yeah. Anyways, we beat Hyper Offense with Lilical. So, uh, on to the last battle of the day. So for our last battle of the day, we face what's probably the most terrifying team we've seen yet. The Firewater Grass Court at the bottom, plus Colossal Pult and Urshifu. This is not going to be easy, but we've got to assume she's bringing Colossal. So I do have a plan for this, and it pretty much revolves around setting up Trick Room, which surprisingly I have yet to do in this video. I tend to do it a lot on my Twitch streams, but uh... Yeah, this is definitely going to be a Trick Room game where Glacier kind of just sweeps and uh, we stall out the Colossal Dragapult lead, which not not too surprising that she leads with Colossal Dragapult, you know, Surf into uh, Mac, G Max Vocalith is one of the most terrifying uh, duos in VGC right now. Now a, uh, a quick warning, I know that I've yet to do it and it's on me and Chow, it's a move on me and Chow. I have yet to do it and Believe me, if there was a way around it, I would I would do it for, you know, for YouTube. Uh, like, if I could fake out into Dragapult or just take out Dragapult right away or Oko, Colossal, I would do it. But yeah, we go for the turn one ally switch of shame. Dragapult actually opts for the light screen, which is kind of smart because I think he realizes that even with Surf, I'm not, er, he's not going to be able to take out Dusclops in one turn. But it, also kind of confusing because he should be afraid of my physical attackers, right? Like I have Glacier in the back, I have Thunderous, like what is he afraid of? Torkoal? Oh yeah, also a quick note, it never occurred to me that maybe Light Screen was the only screen that he had. Um, you know, at this high of a uh, well, I always assume I always assume that my opponent has everything they need to, you know, combat my team. So I just figured, oh, he must have Reflect, but uh, yeah, I guess it never occurred to me that he only has Light Screen. Since Dragapult decided not to surf into Colossal last turn, Colossal's actually going to go before Mian Chao. Since my opponent is cautious of proccing weakness policy too early, I figured I'd do the honors myself oh, when he didn't damage. expect it. And of course our boy comes through with the timely crit, and weakness policy gets activated and surf is totally pointless now. Now what's nice about Mian Chao is he realistically can spam close combat without a, a lot of drawbacks since Mian Chao is so frail already, like what do the defense drops matter anyways? Fortunately, instead of Surf, Dragapult goes for Will-O-Wisp into Mian Shao. Finally, someone acknowledges the sheer strength of Mian Shao and that he must be dealt with. Uh, more life is coming soon, and more tune for your head top, so watch how you speak on my name, you know? We have one turn left of Mian Shao before he meets his demise. And sadly, this is pretty obvious to my opponent too, and he protects. But what's not obvious is that's not going to save him from the incoming haze, and just like that, his plus two special attack is all gone. Also, Mian Xiao's defense drops from close combat are gone, but that doesn't really matter at this point. CC won't land, and Colossal lives to see another turn. Dragapult follows up with the Surf, and I can see why he went for the Protects now. Surf takes out Mian Xiao, who almost took out a whole G-Max Colossal all on his own. What an absolute unit. Glacier checks in during the middle of Trick Room, which we absolutely love. And Colossal returns to his normal form. We were able to stall out Colpult with Mian Xiao out on the field for all three turns. Not too bad. Now that both of his Pokemon are normal size, it's time to take out both of them this upcoming turn. The game plan is pretty straightforward. Nightshade into Colossal because he's in Nightshade range, and Hailstorm into Dragapult before he can burn me. As nice as it would be for a horse to come in with four turns of Trick Room last, I'm pretty sure at this point in the battle there's only two left, which is actually probably really good because Dusclops is on his last little bit of HP and Thunderous is coming in, so I may want to switch over to having Thunderous be the fastest Pokemon on the field and just like Glacier take hits and still live. Just as I had anticipated, both Colossal and Dragapult go down this turn, and now I've got to start thinking about what are his next two Pokemon coming in. I think I'd be most afraid of Incineroar and Urshifu coming in, because even though I'd get a Defiant boost, Having Incineroar and Urshifu would force me to use like Super Power and Fly, two moves that have kind of unfortunate drawbacks, or at least more worse drawbacks than Wild Charge in my opinion, so I don't want to see them. 
And if I do, this will make the battle a little bit tougher and not as guaranteed as it may seem right now. I toss in my Fenris because that's the last Pokemon that I have. And he brings in Tapu Fini. Okay, that's good. And Rillaboom. All right. That's actually fantastic for me. That's literally the exact opposite of what I was like not hoping for which means this is exactly what i've been waiting for this is exactly the ideal late game for thunderous and glacier we're actually going to semi stall out trick room this turn the game plan is thunderous will protect since he's the fastest pokemon out there and apply heavy pressure with the horse since 90 percent of rillabooms run assault vests and he can't protect Max Hailstorm into Rilla is much safer than Max Quake into Feeny this turn, and it proves right. Also, another reason I went into Rillaboom was because I just didn't feel like using Fly. Like, I'd rather just finish off with a Wild Charge and, like, that be that. You know, just get the game over as quick as possible. But I suppose, out of the two, Rillaboom would be doing the most damage to Glacier. But at this point, I don't really think it matters. Tepu Feeny opts for the Protect now that the Trick Room is gone. And, uh, I guess he thinks he can still win this? And we've got Wild Charge, and we've got Max Quake. The Max Quake will at least still connect and uh, give us an another special defense boost. Actually, that's our only special defense boost because we used Hailstorm twice. But uh, yeah, so we get a special defense boost, and that's going to make Tepu Fini's, you know, cause a little bit tougher. At least she does stall out my Dynamax, so I mean, I guess that's a plus if that's what Fini is going for, but I'm not going to keep you guys around any longer than this Tepu Fini did. So, after that Protect turn, we get off the Wild Charge because he didn't try for the Double Protect because he was actually trying to win, apparently. And yeah, that's the game. And yeah, despite how terrifying and popular Dragapult Colossal is, that's how I go about dealing it with this team. Okay, so here's the rental code for the current team build. I'm very satisfied with how well this team handles a lot of common threats in the meta, as well as adding some unique flair to a somewhat common team itself. This video was a ton of fun to make, and it also helped me shake off some rust as editing videos used to be a lot of fun a few years ago, and I'm just getting back into it. If you would like to see more showcase videos or content in general, leave a like and hit the sub button. I also stream a few times a week on my Twitch channel, as well as have my own Discord if you sound interested. We talk Pokemon, Smash, all kinds of games. We're a growing community, so we'd be happy to have you. Both links will be in the description alongside the PokePace, so give them all a look. That's about all I have to say. I really hope you like the Mian Chao team as much as I do, and have a great day.